Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is the expansion to Conqueror Final Conquest, Conqueror Empire Rises. This is a fully fledged expansion for the game that you'll need to buy separately and is currently on GameFound. It is a three to six player game, roughly an hour and a half to two hours to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. And in the game, you'll be selecting from six different factions, from anywhere between Egypt and Gaul and Athens and all kinds of different places that you can choose from. Select your specific board and the characters you're going to be playing with or the locations, as well as all the bonus new things that are going to be involving upgrades, for your units, your civilian districts, and of course a round marker and the ability to trade with your allies. That's the basic idea of the expansion along with your own new player boards and unique new units. We'll talk about all the new stuff, the basic idea of setup, the basic idea of play, but I do have another video linked down below in the description for the base game. So I'll give you an idea of all the stuff that the expansion comes with and then I'll tell you my review. The setup for the game of Conqueror is pretty simple. You'll select the main game board and you'll flip it depending on the number of players. This is the three to four player campaign and the other side is the five to six player. Here I have the three player game set up with these specific characters from Carthage, uh, this one over here is Rome, and then over there is Greece. And based on the number of players that you're playing with will determine which of the different uh, areas or players you're going to be utilizing and these three specifically and then of course you're going to have unique neutral units. Uh, the back of your game board is going to detail what you're going to need in, in order for the setup to work and it'll tell you your starting units and where they go as well as what your unique unit looks like and of course some strategy tips. The setup for your character is pretty straightforward or I guess your location. You're going to be getting a certain number of units found on the left hand side of your main game board illustrating your specific archers and basic units as well as your knights. Um, the card for your dynasty which will be placed in the middle. Your unique new character unit. There's a miniature will go on your board in the large space and um, you're going to also get this little civilian or this little uh, token here which is going to be used for like your upgrades that you place on your board and finally this guy here this is like your um, fort that you'll be placing on your board as well that you can utilize on the right hand side it'll tell you how much currency you get regardless of what's on the playing field here every single round you're going to get a battle tracker which is going to include a ones and ten space along with markers for that uh, you're going to get your hero cards just like in the base game which are going to give you different types of characters like Crassus and uh, Julius Caesar and uh, Pompeii pay the great and then a bonus mission you'll take one bonus mission and you'll put it in line with your specific faction everybody's going to get a certain number of food supply and you'll be placing that on this track here and it's either going to be one or two depending on what you're playing as uh, most of them are all two but there are certain specific references to ones that only have one like specifically Greece or Carthage um, and then of course you have your main game board set up where you're gonna be placing all your characters down along with in the rule book it'll tell you where the neutral faction units are going to go uh, after you've placed all your units down on the game board you'll set your currency on the side as well as different decks of cards and keeps and additional dice that you'll be using for this you'll set up the chronicle deck chronicle deck, chronicle deck is going to have a list of different numerical values of one and then two and three you'll set up uh, three ones three twos and three threes and make sure you place them in a stack in that order as well as on the uh, right hand side of your game board or anywhere within reach you will have your upgrade units and based on the number of players you're going to include an upgrade of each type for each player. So in this case, I have for my cavalry, heavy cavalry, aggression, and thoroughbred. So you'll take uh, one of each of those cards for each player. So in a three player game, you're going to get three of each of those. And you'll do the same for infantry, archers, and navels. The rest of your upgrade units cards are not going to be utilized, so you can take them and put them on the side of the board. You're also going to have a round marker with a round token that you'll place on number one. The game will end at round 10, so as long as you put on one to start with, you'll be good, as well as one um, cavalry from each character placed on the track on the bottom left hand side of the round board. And then the final one is the civilian district where you're going to take a card for each player of each type and place them down in the granary sections, fort, bazaar, and the academy, separating the rest of the cards to the side. After you've done that, you've set up the main game as well as the expansion and you can begin play, which I'll tell you the basic idea of how the game goes as well as all the extra bonuses that you can get from Conqueror Empire Rises. In the game, there are 10 rounds, and in a round, there are five phases. There are 10 total rounds in the game, and at the end of the 10th round, you will check to see who has the highest amount of victory points. 
If, however, somebody is able to acquire a number of forts before the last round hits, they will win. Now, because the first round actually removes the first phase, we'll talk about the second round. So when you apply these rounds, remember that the first round does not include this first portion of the phase. Phase one, which only starts on round two, is called the new year, where you'll retrieve your agent, which is this guy here that actually goes on your unit upgrade or your trading area or your civilian district, and you'll put it back onto your game board. Uh, the next thing you'll do is you'll pass the first player marker, you'll draw a chronicle card, which are like new things that happen year to year or round to round, and you'll resolve that card. And you may also trigger a dynasty change once per game uh, from round five and up. The next thing that happens is taxation. Taxation will allow you to earn two money as well as any additional money from cards on your player area and from units that you control with a money symbol on their region. So in this example, if I had uh, this specific Roman character here, um, I'm going to get two from the board. Then I'm also going to get any more that I have attached to my areas here. And Rome has one, which would give me three. If I also had a character in Sardinia, that would also give me four. And then let's say that I had something like a bazaar, that would give me five. And that's the way you're going to be earning currency. You know, everybody can do this simultaneously. The next thing is policy. Send your agent to a space not occupied by another agent, and you can either trade, build a district, or you can upgrade your units. This is your agent here, and you can go ahead and place it on any space that's open, that has a character that is, is part of the game um, that isn't your own. Um, in the case of upgrading units, you just select any one of the four, pay the cost, take the upgrade, and place it down on your board. If it's a trade, you're going to go ahead and place this down on the character you'd like to trade with or the neutral unit. You'll move your cavalry up the space, gain the value, and then give your opponent value back. And that is how all trades will work. Then you have the civilian districts. The civilian districts will let you choose any of the locations as long as they're not occupied, pay the costs, gain the benefit, and they'll provide unique benefits, whether it be food or currency or a fort, etc., etc. And um, after you've selected your agent and placed it down, everybody else has done as well in turn order, then you'll move on to the next portion, which is preparation. You'll recruit units up to your food supply and then forts uh, uh, and from forts you control. So forts are basically these little areas on the, on the map. There's great forts and regular forts. So you can basically spawn units from those areas based on the amount of food you have in your supply it will dictate, dictate how many units you have on the field. So if I have two food, I can have eight units total, no more. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and place down units based on the areas that I have, based on what I'm allowed to place. Uh, whether it be a small fort, I can place like an archer, or I can place one of these little civil, this little infantry units here. Um, or if I had a bigger one, I could go ahead and place one of the cavalry. These all have different values as far as combat go, and uh, the archers have a unique ability. These are the new ones that are allowed to basically attack um, from one tile away, and you'll be actually rolling a die on a four plus in combat to try and do a damage as opposed to just your infantry having one power. Archers may have a power, but they're not actually going to be influenced in combat as far as taking damage. And everybody's going to be able to spawn units on the game board. After you've gone ahead your prep done, you can go ahead and choose to recruit elite units and heroes by paying their cost, which is also part of the prep phase. Uh, this is like your elite unit here. It tells you the cost on it, tells you what type of character it is, and then uh, tells you what the ability does, whether it gives you bonus attack um, in general to like forts and great forts, how much regular attack it has, and you'll be spawning it just like you would with the other characters provided you paid for it. Each character has a different cost and a different unique ability and can be spawned onto the game board. Um, and so you'll be utilizing those in combat. You can also purchase heroes. Now heroes are not actually characters in the game, but you utilize them as combat changing cards in battle. Like if I, for instance, picked up Julius Caesar, it has a combat value and it has special abilities that you can use when engaged in combat. You could be like, I'm playing this guy in addition to my combat. And maybe I also have my unit here. Uh, and you'll check to see basically when combat, you know, whoever has the highest value is the winner kind of thing. So these are kind of extra bonuses you can use provided you can pay for them. Costs being on the bottom right of the card. Uh, after you've gone and prepped basically spawning units and purchasing any special heroes you would like or, or hero cards, then you're going to campaign. You can move each unit one space on the game board into an adjacent land or sea territory. So basically all units are equipped with a sailboat or whatever type of boat you want to imagine. If another army occupies that territory, bam, initiate a battle. 
and a battle has a lot of stuff going for it. You can reinforce, so every player can reinforce the battle with an adjacent active army or unit. So if, you have, if you're fighting in one area specifically that has units, you can reinforce with another adjacent area that has your units. Your archers, a new thing, will volley, throwing rolling dice to try and do additional damage um, with a max of two. Um, War Council, you'll reveal cards together, heroes from your hand, or activate used heroes next to your player board. So basically you'll be playing these battle tactic cards and you're revealing them to do extra damage. Um, melee are gonna roll dice, then you're gonna check your casualties, players will lose units. If you remove their units from the game board, you control that area. And that's the same for regular characters in the game or the more um, the, the neutral characters that you can get rid of as well. And after you've done that, everybody's gone through and torn out, torn out of that, then of course you'll go through the new year again and you'll move your tracker here from round one to round two and you will rinse and repeat. And that's the basic idea of the game. Now, like I said, if you want even more in depth as to how to play the basic game, you can go ahead and watch my other video. It'll explain how combat works and all that good stuff. But for this, most mostly for expansion reviews, I like to just cover the main new expansion concepts to the game as opposed to getting into the nitty gritty of the base game. So that's what we're gonna do in my review. In Conqueror Empire Rises, the expansion from Conqueror Final Conquest, there is quite a lot that has been added. There are new aspects to the round of gameplay that you'll be doing now. Um, you're going to be able to send out your agent, which is the most unique thing so far, in my opinion, for the game, uh, to one of these three game boards. Now, there always was rounds, and you always had your basic two units, which were your um, horses and your regular dudes. Um, but now you've got this unit here, and this unit can go to upgrading your units, which will give you the ability to make your horses do something unique. Um, or now your archers are going to get uh, on a 3+, plus as opposed to a 4+, plus damage, and so on and so forth. There's a ton of new upgrades that you can purchase with the different areas, and you're limited to which ones you can select based on what other players have selected as well. You can also go ahead and take this marker and place it down on a trade area. Thusly, you and somebody else can benefit. But when you do that, you can no longer hurt that player for the round. So you're like in a treaty, you both gain value, but neither of you can mess with each other, which works great in gameplay because most of the time people go into treaties is because there's one sole survivor player that's doing excellent, and so everybody else has to kind of team up against them, which is what would happen in the real world as well. Now the cool thing is your civilian districts. Now you're going to be able to upgrade basically what your area is going to have. Now, if you control Rome, Rome might also have a bazaar and a granary and a fort and an academy. And of course, you'll be placing them on your game board in these different locations. Now you're limited to the number of things you can have, but throughout the game, uh, there's a lot of things and choices you can make which will benefit you. Speaking of cool things that benefit you is when you're trading and you're moving your cavalry units one space at a time, you're gonna be slowly starting to gain more and more value Value while giving your, your opponent slash your current ally some value. And as you move across this track here, there's going to be bonuses that you'll be presented with. And my favorite one at the very, very end is you can take an extra action using this guy by moving him again to somewhere else, allowing you to basically gain a new civilian district or a unit upgrade. So now you can kind of combo off as long as you choose to do a lot more trading. So people who trade might be of benefit. However, they'll have a lot less upgrades to start the game off with. So maybe they can become more of a powerhouse at the very end of the game. Uh, the fact that you can only trade with certain people who are on the board makes sense. When you're playing obviously with a six player game, all of the spaces open up so you can mess with pretty much anybody. The same uh, applies for the main game board when it comes to your supplies and whatnot. Still functions the same as the other original game with how much food you have, how many units you can have, and all of this really makes sense in context to the year this was around and the type of requirements for resources and supplies and how many units you actually had for military. It all works out well, as well as the different heroes for each of the characters, uh, or I keep saying characters, but it's basically like the different empires of, of that time period. And each of these cards are very, very extremely powerful and that does not change in this game. They're still very, very good. Your bonus mission is still present and it might require you to do something like conquer Babylon or conquer North Africa and score yourself additional currency, which will allow you to hopefully secure more forts. And like I said, I believe it's seven forts you need to conquer and if you do that, you instantly win the game. Uh, being able to also bring out a new unit, which is also a miniature, which is awesome, is great. This guy here is powerful. They're very powerful, but they're also very fair. The only thing different with this unit compared to the other units that you might have is that once this guy perishes, he does not come back. So make sure that when you use him, it's in a dire circumstance and you can keep him alive as long as humanly possible. 
Uh, each of the factions have their own unique abilities, which are pretty cool, and cards that you can flip at certain points in the game giving you benefits, and you have to kind of make sure that you have met um, the requirements. So for instance, with Carthage, starting from round five, if you control no more than one great fort and two small forts, you can flip this. And I believe that's the same for all of these guys. And when you flip them, this is going to give you benefits. Um, now, of course, the player who is ahead, most likely controlling a lot of things, will not be able to, which is kind of a balancing act in this game. And this game has a lot of balancing acts as you play through it. You never know who's going to win. Like I said, there are certain things that change throughout the game. There's the certain types of chronicles that can make different things happen. Your bonus mission, whether or not in the middle of the game you can flip and gain value, who you choose to trade with, and who you choose to ally with, which will happen as well and then the types of unit upgrades and civilian districts that you can implement to your player board. Um, archers. Archers are a new type of unit now. These guys here have a range. You'll be rolling dice with them to see if they hit from a range. Really, really cool. Nice little addition. Nothing super duper special, but it works well and they existed, so why not add them? Overall, this is an excellent expansion to the game and gives you a ton of new things to add. Now you have unique special characters, archer units, a full character board, things that are going to flip to give you benefit mid-game, place to place your upgrades, and a place to place your districts, because these are new things that did not exist previously, a round tracker, which uh, did not exist in this form previously, a way to trade with players and gain value, which did not exist previously, um, as well as a bunch of little tokens you'll be utilizing for your forts that you're going to be adding. There's cards here for your, um, the, 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 I guess the automata deck that kind of has them do certain things, um, and so on and so forth. There's also your currency in the game, which came previously. A battle tracker, um, which is going to dictate how much value you have in your battle, which will determine how well you did. And uh, the battling is not super complex, but I don't want to go into some, too much detail because it's all explained previously. It's the same basic concept with a few more numbers added to it. Uh, the game board is still represented basically the same as previously. I think it is previously the exact same game board with the option to flip for a three to four or a five to six player game. How combat works and how area control works and the idea of it being kind of a risk-like strategy is still very much the same in, in its, uh, its style, its gameplay. It's just got a lot more added to it. And if you liked this game and you enjoyed its combat and its complexities, this just brings a whole new world of additional gameplay elements. It includes a bunch of unique concepts. It allows you to kind of focus on one thing or another, not usually allowing you to choose like everything that you'd want to choose, but enough to give you a taste of literally everything to which makes this game have a lot of replayability. Do you like these style games where you're basically trying to have area control and a little bit of tableau management with a little bit of risk and a lot of combat and like social utility when it comes to diplomacy? Conqueror is going to be one of those games for you. For those of you who do not like games, it will take quite a bit of time, it might involve some AP, understanding the concept of how combat works, because it's probably the most complicated aspect of the game, and how you can move along certain areas and where you can move along. There are certain restrictions as to how and where you can move, um, that kind of thing, then it might not be uh, for you. Uh, overall, though, I'm a big fan of anything that has to do with uh, the pagan empires, the early pagan history, Rome, Greece, Athens, all this good stuff. And this presents all that really well. Beautifully done. Cool new artwork that I really, really appreciate to the, added to the game that kind of just gives it a little bit more oomph and overall is a must-have for, for this base game. So yes, Conqueror, <laughs> Empire Rises is a must-have. It's something that I'm going to be keeping for this game forever now as I play it, and I suggest if you like the base game, this is a guaranteed must-have. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Conqueror Empire Rises, the expansion for Final Conquest. If you're interested in picking this game up, it's on GameFound. There's a link down below in the description where you have the last week to take a look at it. Um, if you're interested, there's a website unfilteredgamer.com, blog post giveaways, giveaways, there's two of them, um, board game reviews and all kinds of stuff and blogs. You can check that out as well as our Instagram. We have a live stream and whatnot every Wednesday where we sell games and on Sunday, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook, we play games just like this one here. In fact, I think we did play this years ago. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to venturing in uh, once again to the early Roman period and battling it out with you next time.